Hello, and thank you for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Aaron Porras, here with ILTV's Morning Briefing. Earlier this morning at 9 a.m., a yet unidentified Palestinian terrorist approached the Israeli border police stationed at the Tepuach Junction near Nablus in the West Bank. When called upon to stop and self-identify, the terrorist did not respond, but continued walking towards the combat soldiers. At one point, the suspect, a roughly 20-year-old resident of Tul Karem, pulled out a knife and began to run towards the IDF border police. The defense forces promptly shot the terrorist dead at the scene, and there were no other reported injuries. A proposed bill to muffle the loudspeakers used during Wezen calls to prayer has now allegedly been personally delayed by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Reports say that the Israeli premier made the move to buy time to write a harsher version of the legislation that would instead place an outright ban on the use of the amplifiers throughout the night hours. The new language in the bill would also impose a fine for each individual infringement, ranging from 5,000 to 10,000 shekels, or up to nearly $2,600. Opponents of the bill, like Interior Minister Ari Ederi, say that the law is completely unnecessary, and suggest instead creating a committee designed to simply enforce lower volumes on the call to prayer. Derry continued saying that existing noise pollution laws on the books are sufficient enough to enforce the desired outcomes, and that he didn't think the bill would pass through the Knesset. Jewish home MK Moti Yogev, who sponsored the proposal, said, however, that the bill will be on the Knesset voting agenda again next week, this time simply including two versions with differently defined hours of the day to be enforced. Two Hamas terrorists were killed last evening when a terror tunnel collapsed in northern Gaza. The site is about half a kilometer from the border fence with Israel, and several other people were injured in the collapse, according to reports in the Arab media. The two diggers were identified by the Gaza Health Ministry as men in their 20s. They are the fifth and sixth tunnel workers to be found dead this week. According to Army Radio, Hamas confirmed the deaths and said that they lost their lives during a so-called mission of Holy Jihad. Hamas, an internationally recognized terror organization, is currently trying to rebuild its vast underground tunnel network that was decimated in the 2014 war in Gaza between Hamas and Israel. More than a dozen have reportedly died over the last year during attempts to reconstruct the tunnels. The tunnels are designed to store weapons and to infiltrate Israel to carry out murderous attacks. The so-called settlement bill designed to legalize thousands of settler homes built on private Palestinian land in the West Bank was approved in its first reading late last night following a five-hour Knesset debate. The bill passed with 58 members of the Knesset voting in favor and 51 voting against. Habayta Yehudi leader Naftali Bennett praised the bill's passage saying this is a day on which half a million residents of Judea and Samaria and all Israeli citizens can raise their heads in the knowledge that not only are we truly the people of this land, but we are also the people according to the law of the state of Israel. He then addressed the residents of the Omona outpost settlement directly, who are still scheduled to be evacuated by the end of December. Bennett begged them to refrain from resorting to violence, saying under no circumstances can a hand be raised against a brother. Speaking to officials from the European Union with regards to recent operations in Syria, Defense Minister Avigdor Lieberman admitted that indeed Israel does strike within Syrian territory in order to prevent advanced weaponry and other military equipment from reaching Hezbollah. Lieberman did not comment on which operations he was referring to, but insisted that, quote, we are working first and foremost to defend the safety of our citizens and to protect our sovereignty. Former Defense Minister Moshe Ya'alon, as well as other Israeli officials, have expressed similar concerns, specifically referencing the prevention of chemical weapons ending up in the hands of terror groups who wouldn't hesitate to use them. Lieberman continued in his meeting with the EU ambassadors to discuss the prospects of peace with the Palestinians, as well as his views on ending the Syrian civil war. One EU official called it a good, constructive conversation. That's all for now. I'm Aaron Porras, and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time.